This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The misconception that Melville did not begin writing poetry or ambitious poetry in the late 1850s and did not have a volume of poetry ready for publication in 1860 seems to derive from reliance on Weaver's 1921 biography to the exclusion of all later scholarship. Weaver had not known about poems, 1860. His primary source of family information, Melville's granddaughter, Eleanor Thomas Metcalf, apparently had not learned about it in time to tell him. The evidence had rested, unread, in the Doy King collection in the New York Public Library until 1922, the year after Weaver's biography appeared, when Mead Minigarode published some personal letters of Herman Melville and a biography. In the standard anthology, Melville Representative Selections, 1938, Willard Thorpe reprinted or summarized this evidence. Thereafter, the fact that Melville had completed a volume of poems in 1860 was familiar to J. Leda, who in the Melville Log, 1951, published additional evidence, and to all Melville scholars and even to many critics who had not worked with Melville documents themselves and who had not seen Minigarode's book. Melville's Memoranda for Allen concerning the publication of my verses, 12 specific directions, have been quoted repeatedly, as well as printed in Menegarode, Thorpe, The Letters, and the Northwestern Newbury edition of Melville's Correspondence. False statements made in conspicuous places have always bedeviled attempts to understand Melville, but the situation is infinitely compounded in the 21st century, for the reviews written by Broadhead, Del Banco, and Schultz in 2002 continue to mislead incalculable numbers of readers during their indefinite afterlife on the Internet. The eager new Melvillian who encounters these reviews on the Internet finds them unencumbered by any version of the patented Melvillian warning label, No Trust. There is, of course, nothing putative about either title, The Isle of the Cross, or Poems. The books are lost, but they existed. Ignorance about The Isle of the Cross and Poems has distorted the verifiable stages in Melville's development as a writer. Melville did not renounce writing fiction in 1851 or 1852. He completed The Isle of the Cross in 1853 before beginning to write short stories. He did not renounce all writing, even after composing his third lecture in 1859, for by that time he was already writing poetry, as he did until his death. Modern critics have been reluctant to, or actually unequipped to, pay thoughtful attention to scholarship. Yet more is at work than a climate in which scholarship is ignored. In 1954, Walter E. Besenson, a great scholar-critic, saw a contraction of Melville's creative powers in the fact that between 1846 and 1857, he had published ten books, and in the five years between 1857 and 1862, he had published none. Besenson could not have known for certain about yet another prose work in those extraordinarily creative ten years, The Isle of the Cross, Melville's eighth book, if it had been published. But he could have mentioned poems, as witness that it was Melville's publishing outlets that had contracted, rather than Melville's creative powers. It is hard for any human being, even so fine a critic as Besenson, to visualize something that does not exist, and to make complicated allowances for it. Yet however strongly the human brain resists taking uncertainty into certain account, critics now must begin to rethink the trajectory of Melville's career, in the light of the only partially tangible The Isle of the Cross and Poems. In Volume 2 of Herman Melville, I insisted that in the future critics should speculate responsibly about how Melville might have changed in style, psychology, intellect, in the process of writing the lost The Isle of the Cross from mid-December 1852 till late May 1853. Similarly, a responsible critic will take account of how Melville might have developed as a poet in the process of writing the lost poems from 1857 or 1858 until May 1860. No one can think responsibly about Battle Pieces, 1866, Clarell, 1876, John Marr, 1888, and Timoleon, 1891 without taking into account that Melville completed a book of poetry in 1860. Critics still refer to Battle Pieces as Melville's first book of poetry, instead of his first published book of poetry. 
Critics still write as if battle pieces followed the confidence man, 1857, without any intermediate literary work.